It's the breakfast in Plus TV Africa. It's off the press and we have GD Johnson, a chief lecturer at Nigerian Institute of Journalism. It's good to have you join us this morning, GD Johnson. Good morning, Mercy, and thank you for having Mercy and me and good morning to our viewers all over the world. It's a pleasure to once again to be with you. All right, so, so let us, let, let's also make this very public. Congratulations once again and we wish you a blissful uh, married life. Thank you very much, Miss. Thank you very much. I appreciate this. Thank you very much. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, then. Uh, we'll take a look at the leadership newspaper this morning. As is always, uh, our attention would be on the big captions or the top stories, if you like to say, both stories on the front pages of a national daily spot. We'll start off with the leadership. On the leadership newspaper this morning, the captions or the bold captions are really, really interesting. And you find this one saying, How 14 aspirants stands, 811 PDP delegates in a moment of decision. So uh, a lot's been going on, but I'd definitely leave that to G.D. Johnson to react. It feels like your choice of becoming anything is to become a delegate in Nigeria. Manifesto Yahaya Bello leads aspirants in channels TV rating. Okay. And uh, just away from that, APC primaries, Boni, Sonwulu, Matawale Zulam, Abdurazak return on oppose. Uh, the headlines this morning, not so much on the leadership. But moving away from that, you have the Punch newspaper. And on the Punch newspaper, governorship primaries, fresh crisis hit APC factions, boycott polls, threaten suits, Lagos aspirant protests exclusion, Songwo Lu, Abiodu, Omo Agege, Matawale, others win, Abe Ogun, Sokoto aspirant alleged fraud and threaten suits. Kiamo, others absent. The writers you find underneath uh, the bold caption on the Punch newspaper this morning. Tunubu Kwankwaso Ekwaremadu may lead regional parties. CBN defends Naira with $3.4 billion in two months. This is what you find. There's also an editorial this morning. I'm sure you want to check that out. But away from uh, the editorial, manufactured goods trade deficit hits 2.6 trillion naira despite forex shortage. 63 million technology devices sold annually in Nigeria. This is a report from the NCC. 63 million technology devices sold annually in Nigeria. PDP gets Parallel government candidates in Ogun, Kanu, and Akwaibom. I will ensure Nigeria export fuel in two years. Bakir is quoted, uh, one of the presidential aspirants, Tunde Bakir. Buhari attends AU summit in Malibu, and you find APC primary court decides Jonathan's fate today. Ex-president gets Weaver. And... I can't share money like other aspirants says Umahi. Maybe just like Shehu Sani, who said, um, you know, he got just two votes because he didn't share a dime. Even to the two votes, he didn't really give money to anybody. Uh, Jam withholds 69 UTME results, screens 27,105 again. PDP gets power government candidate in Ogun, uh, Kanu and Akwaibom. I, I feel like we took that already. And police arrest 43,329 kidnap robbery suspects in uh, you just in one year. Abakari seeks fresh bail and claims threat to life. But you also have a report saying Abakari is doing very great and there's no threat to his life. Well, that's the much on the punch this morning. We move our attention from the punch. And let's take a quick look at the Daily Independent. Ongoing party primaries, a mess. Good luck, Jonathan, as quoted, says, 
they can't be used to elect president, governor, senators, orders. Hmm. Okay. Abakari alleged threat to live and six bill. Section 84, subsection 12, Supreme Court reverses judgment on Buhari AGF suits. FCT minister orders reopening of uh, the DDM building material market. APC governorship primary skewed. A charade aspirant say, Abiodun, Kole, and Yahaya Omwa Gege Zulem, Shungwo Lubuni, others pick tickets. Federal government and state local government share $656.602 billion naira for April 2022. Abacha clinches Kanu PDP gubernatorial ticket. You also have bandits kill three Niger PDP delegates as Katinga emerges party flag bearer. Federal government mounts surveillance to prevent outbreak of monkeypox. <laughs> okay. Uh, you also we also have the Nation newspaper this morning. Uh, just before we have G. D. Johnson share his thoughts on which of the headlines interest him. On the Nation newspaper, how Songwo Lu Abiodun Abdurazak won ticket. Clean sweep for governors, APC holds governorship primary, INEC only result of monitored polls accepted. So you have two riders underneath the board caption that talks about uh, Songwo Lu, Abiodun and Abdurazak winning ticket. Uh, underneath it says, clean sweep for governors, APC holds governorship primaries. And INEC is saying only result of monitored polls are acceptable. And just before that, or after that, you have man laments effect of interest rate hike. Manufacturers Association of Nigeria and Sultan fresh out and prosecute, or fish out, I beg your pardon, and prosecute on non-gunmen. I did not abandon youth service, or do I insist and primary monetize a mess, says Jonathan. Primaries monetize a mess, says former president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Well, that's the much that we can take this morning on the front pages of a national dailies. We turn over to G.D. Johnson, who joins us via Zoom this morning uh, to bring in-depth analysis to the big stories. G.D. Johnson, it's good to have you join us this morning. Thank you, Mercy, and let's have a Zoom. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> well, um, the, the, the deadlines are interesting, and 99% of the deadlines centered around the, the party primary is going on, but with particular emphasis on PDP and APC's primaries, because these are the two major parties that will likely control most state government local government and federal government come 2023. However, both are bedeviled with the same crisis. Um, let's start with the headline in the today. She said, our 14 as, as for instance, 811 PDP delegates, 811 people, well, they were what you call delegates, determine who will become the flag bearer of PDP and likely will become the flag bearer of APC come 2028. On less than a thousand people. They are the, the fate of hundreds of millions of Nigerians are placed in the hands of, and this is one of the major problems created by the National Assembly, the process of trying to fight other interests, particularly the governors. They succeeded in shooting themselves in the foot and they forced this type of system on Nigerians, and it has turned to um, cash elections, whereas for the teaming members of the party and such two delegates. Let's continue with the conversation. This time we'll look at the Daily Independent. And on the Daily Independent, uh, there's a concern, a serious concern. It's a global concern, as a matter of fact, as regards monkeypox, this outbreak, uh, the fact that we're still dealing with COVID because COVID has not left us. And so the federal government mounts surveillance to prevent outbreak of monkeypox. What do you make of this situation? Well, um, 
it's important for us to take proactive action. I don't know what level of surveillance the federal government wants to put in place as if a monkey is, is a physical uh, thing that can be identified. All what uh, government is. It's, it's actually physical. Jude uh, Johnson, I'll the federal government. We've been, we've been hearing. Can you, I hope you can hear me loud and clear. We can hear you so, loud and clear. Yeah. And so I think what government needs to do is to educate Nigerians with, with what is really happening. As, as knowledgeable as I am, I don't know what monkey pause is all about. So what Nigerian needs to know is to, to understand for government to go about an aggressive education and communication with respect to this outbreak so that Nigerians can know and what are the steps we can use to deal with it. So that Nigerians can know how to deal with this issue. Not about mounting surveillance. Surveillance via at various airports or there are many points of entry into Nigeria. Land, sea and air. How many surveillance do they want to mount? I think what we need is education on how to deal with this issue. And that's my take on that. Mm. Uh, but, but we just like you had mentioned, the surveillance is physical. Uh, the government is saying that at different entry points of the country, uh, the amounting surveillance will ensure that you know we don't experience this monkey. You arrested, just like they arrested <laughs> COVID. Wonderful. All right, uh, GD Johnson, we need to move away. Uh, very comical, if you ask me. Well, you still have other uh, interesting conversations this morning. The issue of Section eighty four, subsection twelve, is still begging for a lot of answers and generating different reactions as we speak. So the Supreme Court has reversed judgment on Buhari and the Attorney General, uh, Attorney General of the Federation suit. And uh, that's what you find this morning on the Daily Independent newspaper, Section 84, Subsection 12. Yeah, you said the Supreme Court ruled that it should stand. Supreme Court has reversed the judgment on Buhari's or Buhari and the Attorney General's suit was 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 the, was 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 the, was the was the decision of the appellate court of Earth or was it reversed? Well, mercy. Yes, I can hear you. Mercy. Yeah, was the decision of the appellate court of Earth or was it reversed by the Supreme Court? Well, it w it was actually upheld. The decision of the appellate court that is that the section should stay. What was the decision of the Supreme Court? Was it reversed? Well, the details are not very clear, still very sketchy at the time. Well, as far as I'm concerned, I think that section should be upheld in the interest of Nigerians, in the interest of, like I was saying before, we had a network issue. How can 811 delegates decide who become the presidential flag bearer? Of, of of any party of both parties, eight hundred and eleven. That is already monetized, and that's why Kuloke Bijin Tiada said something positive cannot come out of it. It's heavily monetized. So if I give two two million to each of the delegate, or someone gives five million to each of these delegate, or someone gives a million dollars to each of these delegate, that means that anybody can buy it himself or herself into the presidency. So there is a need for us to uphold that section that gives room for statutory delegates of the party to participate. You should have close to about 3,000, 4,000, or 5,000 delegates voting in national election. I mean, just 811. Even these 811 delegates were elected in, in mysterious circumstances. They were just elected just last week, and the party just did some, what we call, Uru to the answer, and they elected candidates. We should. Can I ask you, do we even know the profile of these 811 delegates? Do Nigerians know the profile of the 811? In, ordinarily, we should know this delegate should have been known at least a year before the election. Even if you are going to, even if you are going to use this 811, you will have known them eight, eight, at least a year before the election. We know their profile. We know everything about them. I'm sure if we check the profile. Until now, most of these delegates are unknown because the list are not yet out. You could see from even from the gubernatorial primaries that was held yesterday, we are having in Kano, in Akwaibom, in Ogun. We have parallel, parallel, parallel gubernatorial candidates. Imagine. And in some states, in, in Delta, some withdrew from the process. We saw a situation whereby a presidential aspirant 
withdrew from the PDP's um, um, PDP's convention, where a, a gubernatorial student said he's not ready to give any kind, any delegates money, and he got two votes. So is this the process we want to use to bring in place the next level of public administrator come 2023? So that's why that section needs, in the interest of Nigeria, the Supreme Court needs to work in the interest of Nigeria, not in the interest of the Attorney General, who had to mortgage his own presidential, his own gubernatorial ambition, because he didn't want to leave the office of the Attorney General of the Federation just for one year. And in the process, another person has emerged as a gubernatorial candidate of APC in Kebbi State. Well, let, let, let's move away from that. You have um, on the Punch newspaper, governorship primaries, fresh crisis hit APC, factions boycott polls and threaten suits. We're talking about the ruling party now. And, and, and if we're having this at uh, this level, what becomes, you know, of the elections in 2023? Your thoughts? Now, it shouldn't be surprising to you. It's not only APC that I was there with the faction. You could see that they're in... In, in, in Enugu State, Ekoimadu was shot out. In Abia State, um, um, I remember Abaribi was shot out. In many states like that, because it's the election of delegates, and it is the, it is the delegate list that the National Working Committee of the party, um, let me tell you for a fact, the elections are already determined before you go to vote. One, because there's a list that comes from the National Working Committee. And whoever the national, whichever function, whichever faction, the National Working Committee works with, the time actually wins the election. So the, the election has already been determined before you even go to the polls. If you know how delegates election works, if you are in the political circle, you know what we call delegates. We call it delegate. Now, we call it delegate. In Lagos State, yeah, we have had some 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 factions who are claiming that they were shot out out of out of the primary. So it is what characterizes um, delegate election. Uh, uh, compared to open, even if you have open primaries, because our parties themselves are not democratic in nature. When did APC had its national convention? When did PDP had its own convention? Its convention to elect its national leaders. PDP had theirs last year. APC just had theirs just about a month or two months ago. And you are expecting something positive to come out of it. This is a charade. What we have is not democracy, it's a charade. Because the party themselves are not democratic in nature. So what we have, what is foisted on us is not democratic, but autocratic rule. And that's why when they come into power, they become more autocratic and despotic because they came in through autocratic and despotic means. How can you explain to me? We are less than, less than 600 or 700 people will gather to elect who become the gubernatorial candidate. And then the list, nobody's aware of the list until the day to the election. And the list is given to... To, by the National Working Committee to, to the electoral panel to come and elect the governor or what what, what have you. It's 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 it's, 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 it's there's a, look there will be a lot of litigation concerning this election concerning this panel there will be a lot of litigation. Hmm. But, I can tell you for a fact. All right, but 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 what do you make of the fact that you know um, you also have on the nation that uh, Song Wolu, that's the governor of Lagos State, Abiodun. Abdul Razak uh, winning the ticket, and it captions that th this might just be a clean sweep for this governors, uh, as APC holds the primary. It feels like it's going, you know, a little bit very soft on the other side, you know, for the APC. Well, um, um, well, the narrative of the nation. If we check the headline of other party other newspaper competition. The narrative of the nation newspaper um, will go in the direction of APC for now. Hopefully, if their principal did not get the a ticket of PDP presidential ticket, you will see that the narrative of the APC will change. They will become more combative and more aggressive in their, in their, in their approach. So that's how they will, they will be favorably disposed towards reporting APC in the, in, in the positive in a positive light now. There were three gubernatorial candidates in Lagos. Somolu was not the only candidate. He was the only candidate that was allowed into the conventions. For, for, for Zulu, we knew he returned on a post, and for some of the governors, they returned on a post. But it was not the same in Delta. It was not the same in Kanu. It was not the same 
in 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 in, in Enugu and and the rest of it. So let's wait and see what comes out of the primaries. But I can assure you, there will be a lot of litigation. litigation. You could see that in one of the sub, in one of the writers of the newspaper, he uh, said that um, um, APC factions threatened suit because they were shut out of the primaries. So uh, what do you also make of, you know, the thoughts of the former president about the ongoing uh, party primaries? And he's saying that it's a mess. That is a mess. There's also, yes, it's a mess, but there's, there are also speculations and, uh, you know, conversations saying that he, he might just also be, you know, on the table for the APC. How do we well, uh, explain he his comments? If he's if he's, if he's, if he's as APC candidate, he will lose hopefully. It's like a dog going back to his home. He will lose, I can say it for a fact. He will, Jonathan will lose the election, mean election, woefully. Because a lot of Nigerians, <laughs> need to, all to what the opposition is, is to recreate the APC campaign of 2015 against it. It's just very simple. Elections are won based on, not based on programs per se, they are won based on set. Because the mass, it is the mass that, that determines the, the, the election and is that vote in the election, but the mass does not have the, the mind of his own. The, you have the you have the opinion leaders that shape the thoughts and the direction of what the mass will think about, and the mass will think in that direction. But I can tell you for a fact, for a fact, the APC should try that. If they have succeeded in shooting themselves in the food, because they are the ones that dug the grave of Jonathan, and I just will help them to push him further into the grave. But indeed, what he said. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy. The primaries is a mess. It's, it's, it's a mess. And nothing good can come out of it. Mm. So you're looking at the front page of the Daily Independence this morning. You have Abba Kiari alleges <coughs> threat to live and six bail. Some people are saying that it might be a trick. Uh, as always, when you have um, uh, this person's you know, in custody. I mean, trying to find a way or probably just find an escape route. And so this is also an excuse. But we can also take out the fact that, I mean, he, he still has a right as a human being, uh, you know, to life. And so if he's, uh, he's saying that his life is being threatened, don't you think that uh, there should be some consideration? Well, Messi is in protective spot. That's why it's protected. If he's left in the open to go on the street, that's when his life is more threatened. Sometimes these people don't think. They think we are fools. So someone that is in protective custody is in detention. He's claiming threat to his life. Now, if you leave him in the open, what happens to his life? He's just looking for an excuse to leave detention. That's just my own thinking. Because he's in protective custody. There is no... His life is even more secure in that protective custody compared to when he's left, when he's granted bail and he's left to wander the street where his life will be in danger. Um, he shouldn't listen to, to his plea. It's just, his plea should be taken to deaf ears. Hmm. All right, uh, moving away from that, you, you find on the Punch newspaper this morning, uh, manufacturers or manufactured goods trade deficit hits 2.6 trillion naira despite forex shortage. And uh, this is according to th this report uh, that you have here on the punch. Uh, what do you make of this, G.D. Johnson? Unfortunately, we do not have G.D. Johnson on phone, but we call it a wrap at this point. Thank you so much, G.D. Johnson, for being part of the breakfast. We do appreciate your time, as always. We look forward to sharing more of your thoughts, so, you know, next week. Thank you.